Have you ever struggled with mixes that are harsh and cluttered in the high frequencies? Today, we're taking a look at one of the most underrated mixing tools, the Humble Low Pass Filter. In this video, you'll learn what a low pass filter is, how to set one up, then I'll break down five reasons to use a low pass filter in the mix, complete with audio examples that really demonstrate its impact. Whether you're cleaning up your vocals, cymbals, or looking to add some depth with your background elements, these tips will help you to sculpt a cleaner, more balanced mix. So let's get started with what is a low pass filter? So a low pass filter is a type of EQ adjustment that's used to remove high frequencies from an audio signal. It's called low pass because it allows frequencies below a set cutoff point to pass through unaffected while filtering out frequencies above a cutoff point. So low pass or high cut. Same thing. Here's a before and after comparison of a low pass filter being added to the master output of a mix. So do you notice how subdued the sound has become? It's almost like you have a blanket over your head or you're standing in line outside of a music venue where a band is playing and you're in line to watch them and there's music going inside and you can just kind of hear the low end and the bass rumble. Do you know what I mean? Now a low pass filter is a great tool for shaping the top end of your mix and the individual tracks within. One suggestion I'll give you is to adjust the filter's slope, which controls how sharply the frequencies above the cutoff point are reduced. A gentle slope such as 6 dB per octave or 12 dB per octave offers a smooth and gradual transition that can round off aggressive or strident recordings. Whereas a steeper slope, something like 18 dB per octave or even higher, is gonna create a more aggressive cut, which is great for isolating a specific frequency range by sharply reducing everything above that cutoff point. This flexibility is one of the main reasons low pass filters are such a powerful tool for improving your mix clarity by shaping your top end. By cutting high frequencies at different points across your tracks, you can create depth and layers to clean up your mix, just like we did with high pass filters in the last video. So if you're a guitar player, you're likely familiar with a low pass filter as the tone control on your guitar. In its fully open position, it's going to allow all of the sound to pass through, but as we roll off the tone switch, the sound coming from the guitar becomes rounder or warmer as high frequencies are attenuated and mid-range frequencies become accented. This video is brought to you by DistroKid. If you're an artist looking to release original music onto Spotify and Apple Music, DistroKid makes it quick and easy with unlimited uploads and artists keep 100% of their royalties and earnings. So if you haven't already, you can get started today with the link in the description to get a discount off your first year's subscription. And there's an even larger educational discount available to students and teachers. All right, up next, let's go through a method for setting up low pass filters to enhance the clarity of your tracks and reduce harshness. So to begin, you're gonna pull up your favorite parametric EQ and on the far right there, you should see something that looks like this, where it slopes down to the right. So you're gonna pull that up and now you can move the frequency cutoff wherever you like. Next, you wanna to listen to each instrument and identify its brightest point. Now, sometimes you want to keep things bright with a lot of presence in the mix, but other times these higher frequencies can contribute to sibilance or harshness if they're not properly controlled. So occasionally rolling off some top end is going to smooth things out and add some contrast between the brighter layers in your mix. So next you want to determine what your frequency cutoff is going to be. You know, how much top end do you need to remove? My suggestion is similar to the high pass filter setup. Bring down the cutoff until you hear the sound begin to round off, then back off the cutoff slightly above this point. 
You can start by experimenting somewhere between 8 kilohertz to 15 kilohertz, depending on the instrument. For instruments like cymbals or hi-hats, you might set the low pass filter at a higher frequency to retain all of that shimmer. All right, next you want to choose your slope. You can adjust the slope of your low pass filter, which is going to control how gradually or aggressively the high frequencies are reduced above that cutoff point. Now I do suggest that you begin with a gradual slope, something around 6 dB per octave. This is going to be great for subtly taming brightness without making the track sound dull. Something with a steeper slope like 18 dB or 24 dB per octave or even more is going to give you a much more dramatic cutoff, almost like a brick wall. This setting sharply reduces everything beyond that cutoff frequency, making it ideal when you want to completely remove unwanted high-end noise or isolate a specific frequency range. Think of the slope as how fast the sound drops off after the cutoff. A steeper slope means a faster drop and a more noticeable effect. Finally, listen to the instrument in the mix with and without the low-pass filter engaged. Compare the clarity and overall tonal balance. At this point, it's a good idea to fine tune the cutoff frequency and slope as needed in context, ensuring that the instrument sounds clear and present without being overly harsh. Now that we've gone over how to set up a low pass filter, here are a few reasons why you might want to consider using one in your next mix. Reason number one removing high frequency noise from guitar amps. Sometimes when you're recording electric guitar, your track may contain some unwanted fizz, hiss, or noise from the amplifier that's going to interfere with the rest of your top end. Now this is to be expected when working with amplifiers, but it can also be fixed by applying a low pass filter to gently roll off these extraneous high frequencies that come from the amp while preserving the clarity and body of the guitar sound. Now this is an approach I took when mixing the guitars for the song Talk by Lexine. Now here I'm rounding off the tone with this low pass filter and making a boost in the upper mids to counterbalance this cut. It's going to add some extra clarity and presence right around that cutoff. <laughs> Now you can actually do this all within just that low pass filter. You can adjust the gain to create a boost just before the cutoff to offset the darker tone. And I like it. I think it makes the guitar sound tight and plucky. So I used a similar EQ for both guitar parts. Check it out. I saw you came alone. Why didn't you reply? Still I can't get the thought of you and me out my mind All right, for reason number two, we're going to talk about tone shaping for a better blend. Now you may find that certain instruments have a lot of brightness or unnecessary high-end energy that is overly sharp and doesn't fit in with your mix. So in this next example, I'm using low pass filters to smooth out these horn parts and create a layered effect. By using a low pass filter to shape the top end of each horn, we can reduce the unwanted high frequencies and smooth out the overall sound coming from the horn section. They're also stock MIDI horns that don't sound fantastic on their own, so sorry about that. The baritone line played by the trombone will have the most high frequencies filtered out. The alto and tenor sax will have a little less of their highs filtered out, and the highest part being the trumpet is still going to have a low pass filter on it, but it will maintain the most high frequencies due to it being the soprano voice. Now let's see if this will glue the section together and sweeten up those midi horns. So 
yeah, I do find that now the horns blend together better as a section and they don't distract as much from the rhythm section. And reason number three, low pass filters are great for creating depth. So as you're mixing, you may find that some instruments compete for space, seeming to sit on top of one another. Now in the demo mix that I used in the last video, I had this ambient guitar swell that is kind of bright for a texture. It definitely sticks out more than it should. And this would be a great job for a low pass filter because low pass filters can be used to move an instrument out of focus, so to speak. This could also be used to reduce how much an instrument competes to grab our attention. So let's add a low pass filter to this track and hear what happens as we bring down the cutoff. The goal here is going to be to push this instrument further back in the mix to create a sense of depth. adding dimension to the overall sound and separation between different elements. All right, for reason number four, we are cleaning up effects like reverb. Sometimes you wanna add an effect that isn't as forward in the mix as the dry portion of the sound. Now you can try using a low pass filter after your reverb to round off your ambience for a creative effect. Now you might say that there's no processing after this reverb but it's actually within the plugin itself. And that's one of the reasons that I really, really love this plugin, Super Plate from Sound Toys. It has a high pass filter and a low pass filter right inside the plugin, and I'm using both of them on this vocal reverb to focus the sound of the effect to the mid range and keep it from being too shiny or distracting on the lead vocal. I'm hoping that you notice when I'm not around You'd think that I'd be better at this by now I saw you came alone Why didn't you reply? Still I can't get the thought of you and me out my mind Adding filters to your effects is just another way to add layers and depth to your music, helping your mix to stand out with more detail. And reason number five, creative sound design. Now one last look at the talk session to show you a fun processing move that you can use with both a high pass and low pass filter together to create a telephone filter like effect that we used on the vocal in the pre-chorus of this song. Let you think of me at night The sun goes down and I can barely sleep Now my version of this EQ curve is pretty similar to Pro Q3's telephone preset, except they have some extra resonant boosts, whereas I've got a few extra cuts to round things out a bit more. This type of moment keeps your music fun, unexpected, and engaging for the listener. And if you'd like to learn how to make your own telephone microphone, you can check out this video. And if you'd like to see a full video breaking down how to recreate the iconic telephone mic sound with any microphone, you can watch this video.
Using these approaches to filtering is not only going to clean up your mix, it's going to increase its overall musicality by ensuring that each individual element has room to breathe in the mix. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. When all we do is talk, 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 it's not my fault, I can't get enough of you, and even when I'm in my bed.